I was an English major at college. Um, and when I graduated from college, I applied to go to England and study Shakespeare. And I applied to go to graduate school and study psychology. And, you know, you could think of it as two ways of studying the same thing, which is the human world. And um, I almost went to England, but instead I went to graduate school uh, initially in clinical psychology because I thought I wanted to be a therapist. And uh, then uh, I, I, had, I got married, fell in love, got married, had a child, um, and thought I don't want to uh, basically... Um, I guess, you know, leave my children and take care of other people's children sort of thing. Um, so I actually then got my degree in social psychology. And uh, for a while I was a modern dancer and uh, involved in the civil rights movement doing voter registration. I did a study on how people thought about turning points in their lives. I mean, remember, I'm, I was a literature student, so I was interested in that kind of thing. You know, you come to a crossroads, and which way do you go? And my study, this was the early 70s, was originally um, on Harvard uh, students, college students, facing the Vietnam draft. I was interested in how people thought about themselves at those moments in life where you say, what am I going to do? And also when people ask the question of themselves, what should I do or what's the right thing to do? Very grounded. So anyway, that was my study. And um, I was working with some graduate students who I was teaching part-time at Harvard. And then President Nixon ended the draft and the Supreme Court in Roe v. Wade legalized abortion. So my draft study ended, but I had another study where people made a choice. So I started interviewing people who were pregnant and thinking about abortion. I was completely blind to the fact that first, my first study was all men and the second study was all women. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about that. So I started listening to women, I would say other women, um, talking about themselves and what their understanding of how you make difficult decisions in life and I heard a dissonance between the women's voices and the psychology I've been teaching. I've been teaching with Eric Erickson and teaching Freud and teaching with Lawrence Kohlberg and teaching Piaget. And the women's voices were different. And I realized why it was so hard for women to be heard in the public discussion. And then I realized that the psychology I was teaching had been based on either the assumption that the human was a man or studies of only men. And I hadn't seen it. No one had seen it or seen it as a significant. And then I got hooked. <laughs> you know, that's it. So it's out of that experience that I wrote In a Different Voice, which is how the conversation would change if it included all those voices that had been left out, including half the population women. Mm -hmm.